AI is hot. AI is revolutionizing the world. But some investors in AI stocks are just begging to lose money because not all AI is created equal. Nvidia is good AI. Palantir is good AI. Coreweave is not so good AI. Nebus Group is not so good AI. And I am talking about their businesses, not their stocks. Imagine this, the world has no clothes. There is no clothing industry. Everybody is either naked or they wear some kind of primitive clothing that they made themselves out of leaves or tree branches. And then boom, all of a sudden, clothing revolution spreads like wildfire. The demand for clothing is out of this world. People want clothing for work, for school, for leisure, for sports, for sleeping. And a company like Nvidia starts producing these clothes for everybody. This company is the best. These clothes feel amazing and they look amazing. Yes, there are other companies like AMD, but their clothes don't feel as right and they don't look as amazing as Nvidia's clothes. Then there is a company like Palantir that creates a proprietary software that nobody has. This software helps you pick the right clothes that Nvidia makes in order to create an even better look and amazingness. Then there are other companies like Coreweave and Nebius Group that came up with a brilliant idea. If people want to buy clothes, then maybe we can buy up a big inventory of clothes from Nvidia and then rent them out to people. Because the clothing boom is so big and so revolutionary, investors buy up the stocks of all of these companies involved in the disruptive clothing industry. But are all these businesses created equal? Just because the clothing industry is new, disruptive and futuristic, does it mean that all of these companies will make shareholders rich? Well, let's analyze this. Nvidia makes all the clothing and therefore generates repeatable revenues because styles change, new models are introduced and existing clothing becomes extinct. Palantir makes all the software that makes people look good in the clothes. They charge recurring revenues and people constantly need these services. Again, repeatable and recurring revenues with high margins. What about Coreweave and Nebius Group that rent out clothing for a fee? First, they have to spend a lot of capital buying huge inventories or rental pools. But the problem is that this inventory depreciates fast and becomes obsolete. Nvidia keeps coming up with new clothing styles, making the old styles obsolete. Coreweave and Nebius Group have to constantly be plowing incredible amounts of capital into growing and replenishing the rental pools. The cycle never stops. And if it ever were to stop within three years, these companies would be out of business. Who would want to rent out out of style obsolete clothing when newer versions are available from Nvidia? But because the clothing industry is so amazing and new, investors ignore such things as depreciation and keep saying how cheap these clothing rental companies like Coreweave and Nebius Group are because of low market cap to revenues or low market cap to EBITDA multiples. I know, I know, I know, AI is hot, AI is amazing, but renting out GPUs like Coreweave and Nebius Group do is like renting out clothes, computers or cars. Okay, you buy a bunch of Blackwell GPUs and you build an amazing data center. Everybody's impressed because the industry is so desperate for computing power, you sign contracts with Facebook, Google and Amazon for the rental of these GPUs. Your revenues explode. Your investors are impressed. They buy the stock. You print a bunch of shares at overvalued prices or you borrow money to buy more Blackwell GPUs. Your revenues grow even more. Your investors, of course, ignore the depreciation and keep quoting EBITDA as if it meant something. Then the CEO of Nvidia comes on stage wearing his black leather jacket telling the audience, I am the chief revenue destroyer. Remember Blackwell? Well, that's yesterday's news. Now we are introducing Graywell or Purplewell, both Graywell 
and purple well have 40x the speed and power of black well. Oops, I guess we need to replace all of the GPUs in our data centers. It's going to be expensive, but if we don't, our clients are going to go elsewhere where they can get more speed and power from the gray well or purple well GPUs. I hope that our investors are going to keep ignoring the depreciation expense and keep looking at our amazing EBITDA so that we can keep printing shares at overvalued levels to keep financing the constantly outdated data center assets. Let's say you buy a car for $10,000 and you rent it out for $300 per month or $3,600 per year. So each year you can say, look, I am making $3,600 per year of income. I am amazing. I need to buy more cars like this so that my revenues and profits can explode. But what did it cost you to make this $3,600 per year? Oh, nothing. Oh, really? If you didn't buy the car for $10,000, you would still be making $3,600 per year? That's what depreciation is. Depreciation is the cost of an asset divided over the years of useful life. So if this $10,000 car had a lifespan of three years, you have to take this $10,000 and expense it at $3,333 per year. Now, with this depreciation taken into account, your income statement looks like this. $3,600 of revenue minus $3,333 of depreciation is $266 of income. Big difference, isn't it? You're only making $266 per year instead of $3,600 per year. Do you still think that this business model is your ticket to wealth? Do you still think that EBITDA earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization is a good metric to use to determine whether CoreWeave or Nebus Group are cheap stocks? In this AI race, there are winning business models and losing business models. NVIDIA and Palantir have winning business models. NVIDIA sells you ice cream after ice cream after ice cream. Palantir sells you software that utilizes AI. CoreWeave and Nebus Group rent out GPUs, which are nothing but just fancy computers or melting ice creams that last about three years and then have to be replaced. Now, this is from the point of view of a business. The stock can be a completely different story, especially in the short term. The stock of Nebus Group went up almost 10x just in 2025. It pulled back significantly since the peak, but it is still up 4x for this year alone. The point is that when an industry is hot, when an industry is new, when an industry is disruptive, investors will ignore the most obvious things. <laughs> Depreciation? Who needs that? GPUs being obsolete in three years? Well, we will worry about this in three years. Now, the party continues and the girls keep on coming. GPUs are melting ice creams? Well, they look good and taste good to me now. Get on with the program. To the moon.